Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney General Garland, let, let me just ask you, d does your department have a problem with anti-Catholic bias? Uh, our department um, is, uh, 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 protects all religions um, and all ideologies. It does not have uh, any uh, bias against any religion of any kind. Well, you could have surprised me, because given the resources that you are expending and the apparently intelligence assets that you are deploying against Catholics, it appears, and other people of faith, while simultaneously turning a blind eye while people are executed gang style on the streets of our cities, including in my home state, I, your answer frankly surprises me. Let's talk about the Mark Houck case, for example. You've been asked about this already today, and frankly, your answers really astound me. This is a case where a Catholic pro-life demonstrator, father, was accused of disorderly conduct in front of an abortion center. The local prosecutor, the Philadelphia district attorney, who is a Democrat, a liberal, very progressive, declined to prosecute. There was a private suit that got dismissed. And then after all of that, your Justice Department sent between 20 and 30 armed agents in the early morning hours to the Houck's private residence to arrest this guy after he had offered to turn himself in voluntarily. Here's the photo once again. You can see the long guns. You can see the ballistic shields. You can see that they're wearing bulletproof vests. Why did the Justice Department do this? Why did you send 20 to 30 SWAT-style agents and a SWAT-style team to this guy's house when everybody else had declined to prosecute and he'd offered to turn himself in? Determinations of how to make arrests under arrest warrants are made based uh, by the tactical operators um, in the uh, district. They are not but you surely looked into it by this point, right? They you, you know the answer, surely. They, all I know is what uh, the FBI has said, which is that they made the decisions on the ground as to what was safest and easiest. So you do not agree with your description of what happened on the scene. You don't agree with my description. I'm pointing out what the photo is. There are agents here who have long guns and ballistic shields. Let's take a look at the hardened criminals that your Justice Department sent these armed agents to go terrorize on that morning. Here they are. Here they are at mass. Here's the seven children with Mr. Houck and his wife. In this early morning, they were all at home. Mrs. Houck has said repeatedly, the children were screaming, they feared for their lives. You've got these agents demanding that he come out, they've got the gun, she said, pointing at the house and at them. He has offered to turn himself in, and this is who you go to terrorize. What's really interesting to me is this seems to directly contradict your own memorandum about the use of force at the Justice Department. You say, Officers may use only the force that is objectively reasonable to effectively control an incident. Are you telling me that in your opinion as Attorney General, it was objectively necessary to use 20 or 30 SWAT-style agents with long guns and ballistic shields for these people? What I'm saying is that decisions about how to go about this were made on the ground by FBI agents. So you're saying you don't know? I'm, I'm saying what I just said that Which is that you're abdicating responsibility? I'm not abdicating responsibility. Then give me the answer. Is Do you think, in your opinion, you are the Attorney General of the United States. You are in charge of the Justice Department. And yes, sir, you are responsible. Yeah. So give me an answer. The FBI does not agree with your description. I'm not asking about the FBI. You are the Attorney General. Give me your answer. Do you think that it was objectively reasonable and they followed your guidelines in sending 20 to 30 armed agents to terrorize these people? Yes or no? The facts I have, which are those presented by the FBI, are not consistent with your description. So you think it was reasonable? I'm saying the facts are not as you describe. What, that the children weren't there? That there, wasn't, that there weren't long guns there? That facts. there weren't agents? What, wasn't, what, what do you dispute? What's the factual premise you dispute? FBI Be specific. FBI said they don't agree with your description of... Be um, specific. They don't agree with what? Of of how many agents, of the agents who were there, and of what their roles were. They don't agree. Do you That's know the jury in this case acquitted Mr. Houck? So I'm sure you're aware. Do you know how long it took him? I, I am aware, and we respect the decision of the jury. Do you know how long it took him? I don't know. One hour. One hour. 
Philadelphia District Attorney declines to prosecute. The private suit's dismissed. You use an unbelievable show of force with guns that I just note liberals usually decry. We're supposed to hate long, long guns and assault-style weapons. You're happy to deploy them against Catholics and innocent children. Happy to. And then you haul him into court and a jury acquits him in one hour. I just suggest to you that that is a disgraceful performance by your Justice Department and a disgraceful use of resources. I notice a pattern, though. The FBI field office in Richmond on the 23rd of January of this year issued a memorandum in which they advocated for, and I quote, the exploration of new avenues for tripwire and source development against traditionalist Catholics, it's their, their language, including those who favor the Latin mass. Attorney General, are you cultivating sources and spies in Latin mass parishes and other Catholic parishes around the country? No, the Justice Department does not do that. It does not um, um, do investigations based on religion. I saw the document you have. What did you do about it? It's appalling. It's appalling. I'm in complete agreement with you. I understand that the FBI has withdrawn it and is now looking into how this could ever have happened. How did it happen? That's what they're looking into. But I'm totally in agreement with you. That document is appalling. I'll tell you how it happened. The this memoranda, which is supposed to be intelligent, cites extensively the Southern Poverty Law Center, which goes on to identify all of these different Catholics as being part of hate groups. Is, is this how the FBI, under your direction and leadership, is, is this how they do their intelligence work? They look, they look at left-wing advocacy groups to target Catholics? Is this what's going on? I mean, clearly it is. How is this happening? The FBI is not targeting Catholics, and, and as I've said, this is an uh, an inappropriate memorandum, and it doesn't reflect the methods that the FBI is supposed to be using, should not be relying on any single organization without doing its own work. Let me just ask you, as my time expires here, a very direct question. How, how many informants do you have in Catholic churches across America? I don't know, and I don't believe we have any informants aimed at Catholic churches. We have a rule against uh, investigations based on First Amendment um, activity, and uh, uh, Catholic churches are obviously uh, First Amendment activity, well, but I don't know the specific answer to your you, you don't know the specifics of anything, it seems, but apparently on your watch, this Justice Department is targeting Catholics, targeting people of faith, specifically for their faith views. And Mr. Attorney General, I'll just say to you, it's a disgrace. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> Attorney General Garland, you said in our last exchange that it's your practice to defer to FBI agents in the field when it comes to investigations, apprehensions of subjects. Um, I was interested, given your answer, to read in this morning's Washington Post that the FBI is saying that you overruled them when it came to raiding ex-President Trump's personal residence. Washington Post reports this morning showdown before the raid <clears throat> that senior FBI officials who would be in charge of leading the search resisted doing so as too combative and proposed instead to seek Trump's permission to search his property. These field agents wanted to shutter the criminal investigation altogether in early June, the Post reports, but they were overruled by Maine DOJ. So I guess in light of your earlier testimony just this morning, my question is, how often do you overrule FBI field agents for political purposes? I've skimmed that article. It is not, that's not an accurate reflection of what the article says, and I'm not able to comment on the investigation. Um, my comment earlier was about tactics uh, on the ground in particular wait, cases. Wait, 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 wait. You said it's not an, I'm, I'm reading to you from the article, quote, Senior FBI officials who would be in charge of leading the search resisted the plan as too combative and proposed instead to seek Trump's permission to seek his property, according to four people who spoke on condition of anonymity to describe a sensitive investigation, end quote. Again, I have to say I'm not able to uh, uh, describe the investigation. I will say as a general ma matter and a, at a high level of, uh, of generality that in my experience, long experience as a prosecutor, there is often a robust discussion and in the end, and it's encouraged among investigators and prosecutors. Attorney General, my time is very, is made. My, yes, and you made the decision. I did, that's right. Not, you said you did. No, I'm sorry. What I said was I approved the decision. So you didn't make the decision I to rape? 
I approve the decision to seek a search warrant after probable cause was Overruling filed. the FBI agents who did not want to do so. Did you talk about this with the White House The beforehand? memorandum does not, that, that um, uh, Washington Post article does not say what you're saying. I'm sorry. And I'm not able to describe this uh, in any further well, detail. Well, I, th I think given that, Mr. Chairman, I'll just ask that this entire article be entered into the record. Without objection. And we can read for ourselves. I invite people to go and look. It says exactly that FBI field agents did not want to conduct the raid, and they were overruled by DOJ. So it doesn't seem to me, Attorney General, that the FBI has a lot of confidence in you, because what they're doing clearly is trying to distance themselves from your decisions. They're out there leaking left, right, and center and saying, it wasn't us. We didn't want to do it. He made us do it. What's that say about their confidence in your leadership? No, the previous senator said that they're leaking all in favor of the left. Now you're saying they're leaking all in favor of I'm the I'm asking right. you my question. Answer my question based on this evidence. Don't dissemble, Attorney General. Time has expired. Answer my question. Time has expired, Senator. How much did this cost to develop, by the way? Senator, I don't have the cost, but let me share with you a critical Well, will fact. you get it for us? Let me share with you a critical Will you fact. get us the cost of what it, to develop this app? Happily. Uh, did, you use a, did you contract with a tech firm to develop it? Um, uh, Senator, we have seen a approximately... Did you contract nine, with a tech firm to develop it? We have seen an approximately 95% oh, decrease. Did you contract with a tech firm to develop it? Yes or no? Senator, this was led by U.S. Customs and Border Protection our technical experts within the agency, and I certainly will get an answer to your question whether outside consultants were utilized so in the know. development process. You don't know. May I, may I explain to you, since you have a misunderstanding of the program, what it is and the impact, the positive impact it has sure. had on encounters of these four populations in between the I just want to know why it is that you are allowing people to come to this border to make appointments, to not be interviewed, and then how many have just been released? Is it true, by the way, as the Texas Monthly reports, that they're simply released into the country on official parole? And get this, they're not given, according to their reporting, any kind of follow-up. Their court dates are in immigration courts, Texas Monthly reports, not even necessarily asylum trials. They're often general de deportation hearings where defendants can make arguments for remaining in the country. Is that true? That is true. Um a completely uh, mistaken understanding of how the immigration process works. That language is completely confusing and erroneous. <laughs> well, it is confusing. What's confusing is why anybody would think that an app like this to allow illegal immigrants to literally reserve a time to come to the border and then be ushered in without an interview, without follow-up, without tracking is stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Thanks, I look Senator. forward to following up with you, Senator. <clears throat> Thanks, Senator Padilla. Senator Hawley. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Secretary. Thank you for being here. Let me start with what I hope is a simple question. Do we need to have more or fewer people coming to our southern border? Uh, Senator, Senator, we are working on diminishing the number of people whom we encounter at our southern border because of the challenge it presents. We're trying to build lawful, safe, and orderly pathways okay. To accomplish that. Okay, fewer. So we need to have fewer, which means we need to roll back incentives to come. So I, I would have, I would have thought that would have been the answer. Let's talk about what you're doing, though. In January of this year, you rolled out a new phone app called CBP One, an app for a cell phone. I've got a picture of it behind me here. This phone app allows. And I'm going to quote from your own fact sheet. It allows, and I quote, non-citizens without appropriate documents for admission to schedule an appointment to come to the border. They can now go on their phone and schedule a time to come to the border and then be admitted. And you identified seven separate border points of entry where they could come. Five of them in Texas, two of them in California, one in Arizona. It's like a concierge service for illegal immigrants. My question is, you didn't think the border crisis was bad enough that now we're going to have an app that allows illegals to schedule their appointments and come and be admitted to this country? Uh, Senator, you're mischaracterizing the use of the application. Let me, let me explain it to you. Uh, we are currently enforcing the public health order of Title 42, and I know you're very familiar with it. There is a process for individuals who claim an exception to 
the Title 42 expulsion authority because of an acute medical uh, uh, condition. Well, let's uh, talk about this urgent, app. If I, if I may finish, an urgent, um, um, an urgent humanitarian reason. So instead of them coming in between the ports of entry to claim that urgent medical condition, that extraordinarily um, uh, acute humanitarian cause, we allow a limited number to arrive at our ports of entry and seek the emergency relief that they need. Schedule, you, you allow them, let's, let's, be, let, let, let's be particular about and what I you do. I should say you that the CBP-1 app was not uh, unveiled for the first time on January 5th of this year. Oh, oh no, but you changed it. You made it available on January 5th to the illegals themselves. You don't have to be a lawyer to use it. You don't have to be a member of a non-governmental organization. Anybody can download the app and use it on their phone. And for the first time, you allowed them to schedule appointments. Now let's talk about what actually happens when they come to the border. It's interesting. You characterized this when you rolled it out as an application for applying for asylum. But nowhere on the app do you actually require the illegal migrants to apply for asylum or to claim asylum or anything about asylum. And in fact, when they then get to the border, you don't ask them questions, you don't do interviews, you just release them. Here's the Texas Monthly, not a notable conservative outlet, who reports, and I quote, at no point does the app ask users, are you seeking asylum? Those arriving for the CBP-1 appointments are given no interviews, asked no questions, about vulnerabilities that they may or may not have listed in the app or about why they're coming to the United States. They're simply released into the country, end quote. So rather than building a wall, Mr. Secretary, you have built Ticketmaster for illegal immigrants. You are, um, Senator, you are conflating programs. Let me, let me explain well, just, to just you. Just respond to this. Is it true that they are given no interviews, asked no questions, and simply released into the country? Let me explain to you what we announced on January 5th. No, no I want you to explain but, to me what's happening. I, I know what you oh, announced. So, I read it to you. So I, so I will explain to you what is happening. Are they given because, interviews? Let's start with that. Are they given interviews? We were previously experiencing that's, almost, that's starting almost, to sound like a no. Well, let's just 90, let's just hone in here, Mr. Almost, Secretary. My time is is very limited. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I want to drive to some clarity here. But Senator, Are they, the Texas Monthly has reported that once illegal immigrants go on their phone and reserve their time to come to the border, once they use your concierge service that you've created for them, when they come, they are given no interviews. They are asked no questions about any vulnerabilities. They are simply released into the country. Is that happening? Uh, Senator, you are mistaken, and if I may explain. Are they given interviews? If I may explain, individuals who seek parole under our January 5th program for Cubans, Haitians, Nicaraguans, and Venezuelans are screened and vetted before they arrive at our border. That wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, they, they, go on an, they go on the phone, and they I, just reserve a time, and then they show up, and they're, not given, they're given nothing. Listen to this. Even immigration advocates are amazed about this. Here, also from the Texas Monthly, here's one immigration advocate whose first name is Orta. She says, that's the crazy part. Nothing in this new program requires you to actually seek asylum. Somehow, We've decided to punish those who arrive at the border without the app, who may be seeking asylum, but we just let in anybody who may or may not have any particular reason to seek asylum, so long as they've made an appointment on your Ticketmaster app. This seems crazy to me. Senator, it's a complete mischaracterization of the program that we announced and are implementing. So how many people have used, how many people have used the app then? That you are referring to. So if I can explain. How many people have used so, the app? So we have, um, we had a significant surge of Cubans. How many people Asian, have used the app? Nicaraguans and Venezuelans. Mr. Secretary, you're here to answer my questions. How many people have used the app? Uh, tens of thousands have sought to uh, make an appointment at the port of entry under our parole program. How, okay. Okay, good. How many have been admitted without an interview at the border? Uh, well, uh, you are... Uh, again, inserting a fact uh, that does not belong in your question. So if I can, I will get you the precise... <laughs> I'm, re I'm reading to you from public reports about how your own app works. You're just blanket denying... Actually, you're not quite denying it. You're saying that maybe we don't understand. Apparently, I don't understand. Texas Monthly doesn't understand. Immigration advocates don't understand. You're the only one who understands, yet you won't answer my question. How much did this cost to develop, by the way? 
Senator, I don't have the cost, but let me share with you a critical Well, will fact. you get it for us? Let me share with you a critical Will you fact. get us the cost of what it, to develop this app? Happily. Uh, did you use a, did you contract with a tech firm to develop it? Um, uh, Senator, we have seen a approximately... Did you contract 90, with a tech firm to develop it? We have seen an approximately 95% oh, decrease. Did you contract with a tech firm to develop it? Yes or no? Senator, this was led by U.S. Customs and Border Protection, our technical experts within the agency, and I certainly will get an answer to your question whether outside consultants were utilized so you don't in the know. development process. You don't know. May I, may I explain to you, since you have a misunderstanding of the program, what it is and the impact, the positive impact it has had on encounters of these four populations in between the I just want to know why it is that you are allowing people to come to this border to make appointments, to not be interviewed, and then how many have just been released? Is it true, by the way, as the Texas Monthly reports, that they're simply released into the country on official parole? And get this, they're not given, according to their reporting, any kind of follow-up. Their court dates are in immigration courts, Texas Monthly reports, not even necessarily asylum trials. They're often general de deportation hearings where defendants can make arguments for remaining in the country. Is that true? That is um, a completely uh, mistaken understanding of how the immigration process works. That language is completely confusing and erroneous. <laughs> well, it is confusing. What's confusing is why anybody would think that an app like this to allow illegal immigrants to literally reserve a time to come to the border and then be ushered in without an interview, without follow-up, without tracking, is stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Let me ask you in my very short time remaining is, something is, else about Chinese is, nationals. I've, I've only got a minute left. That is false. Let, let me ask you about, about the, the Chinese nationals who we all saw coming over the border, busloads of them, and then being released in the American interior. What's the, what's the percentage increase of Chinese nationals who crossed the border this year, Mr. Secretary? Let's just focus on maybe the Rio Grande uh, Valley. Secretary. The, number of, the, the number of Chinese nationals encountered at our southern border uh, has increased significantly. Do you know how much? Over the past. I don't have the precise percentage. I do. It's 900% not, it's just in the Rio Grande Valley sector. Are any, of, are any of these people who came in this bus, these Chinese nationals, members of the Chinese Communist Party? Um, Senator, if an individual presents a national security or public safety threat, we detain them during the pendency well, that's of not their... Quite, but that's not what I asked. I asked if they're members of the CCP. During the pendency of their removal proceedings. Are, so, are any of these individuals members of the CCP? So I think there's indeed, about 70 who came on this if, bus. If indeed they are determined to be a national security threat or a threat to public safety, we detain them pending their removal proceedings. Were any of these individuals detained or were they released into the I interior don't, of the country? I don't have uh, awareness of that particular group of individuals. Um, and so you don't know if any of them were members of the CCP? Or actually, you do know, you just won't say. I, I don't know from the photograph, Senator, to whom But you're surely you know with. about the folks who you, you've read this report, you're the Secretary of Homeland Security, you're aware of these individuals. Were any of them members of the Chinese Communist Party coming into this country? Senator, you're providing me with a group of individuals without names, identities, or... So you're not familiar with this incident that was widely reported on at the southern border? Don't you think it's strange that we have busloads of Chinese nationals coming across our southern border? I'm asking you from a, a hostile country, I'm asking you if they're members of the Chinese Communist Party, and you're, you, won't, you don't know, apparently, you won't say. Senator, we are very focused... Uh, on oh. all things with respect to the People's Republic of but China. But you don't know any of the details. I plead exhaustion, Mr. Secretary. You have exhausted me. You have exhausted this panel. You have exhausted the patience of the American people. You should resign. Senator Welch. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> Secretary, I think that your performance is despicable. And I think the fact that you are not willing to provide answers to this committee is absolutely atrocious. Mr. Chairman, may I? Like, if you'd like to have a, a minute to respond, you are oh, welcome I, to. I would, and I'm not sure I'll limit it to 60 seconds. That's fine. Number one, uh, what I found despicable is the implication uh, that uh, this language, tremendously odious, um, uh, actually it could be emblematic of the sentiments of the 260,000 men and women of the Department of Homeland Security. Number one. Number two, uh, Senator Hawley takes an adversarial approach to me in this question, and perhaps he doesn't know my own background. Perhaps he does not know 
that I am the child of a Holocaust survivor. Perhaps he does not know that my mother lost almost all her family at the hands of the Nazis. And so I find his adversarial tone to be entirely misplaced. I find it to be disrespectful of me and my heritage. And I do not expect an apology, but I did want to say what I just articulated. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can, can I just respond since he has referenced me personally? Senator Holly, we need to move on. Senator. Mr. Secretary, thanks for being here. Let's, uh, let's talk about the surge in child smuggling and child exploitation that is happening on your watch. Do you know the number of unaccompanied children who have come across the border on your watch? Uh, Senator, I don't have um, uh, that number at my well, disposal, but I can assure you that we are incredibly dedicated to the safety and security of those children. Well, it doesn't appear so, based on what we're reading today in the New York Times, what we're reading and seeing from numbers from your own office. The answer to my question, by the way, is 345,807. That's the number of unaccompanied children, children who have come across the border on your watch. Do you know what's happening to these children? Have, have you seen this report from the New York Times, alone and exploited migrant children work brutal jobs across the United States? Have you seen this? Senator, I have, and let me share with you what we are doing. Have you seen these numbers? These are reports of trafficking and abuse of migrant children. You can see a massive surge that begins to happen when? Oh, when you come to office in 2021. Huge surge, reports of trafficking, reports of neglect and abuse. Let's just look at a few of the details. This is absolutely unbelievable. I can't believe this happens in the United States of America in this day and age. This is from the New York Times. Thousands of children have ended up in punishing jobs across the country, working overnight in slaughterhouses, replacing roofs, operating machinery in factories, all in violation of child labor laws. For example, there's a young girl named Carolina from Guatemala. She is 15 years old. What does she do? She packages Cheerios overnight at a factory. She says, sometimes I get tired and I feel sick, the Times goes on, her stomach often hurt. She wasn't sure if that was because of a lack of sleep or the stress of the incessant roar of the machines or her own worry. The Times goes on, far from home, many of these children are under intense pressure to earn money. They have to send cash back home to their families while often being in debt to their sponsors, quote unquote, for what? For smuggling fees, rent, and living expenses. One individual interviewed by The Times said this, I'm still quoting, it's the new child labor. You're taking children from another country and putting them into indentured servitude. I could go on and on. The Times details over a multi-month investigation, kid after kid, child after child, one 13-year-old one forced to wash hotel sheets in Virginia, kids running milkshake machine, milking machines rather in Vermont, delivering meals in New York City, scrubbing dishes late at night, all in violation of our country's laws all facilitated by your policies. Are you proud of this record? Senator, the horrific exploitation of children is something that we do not condone. You are um, incorrectly attributing it uh, to our policies. Let me share with you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It began, look at, look at the numbers, look at the numbers. It began, this massive surge began when you came to office. In your first year in office, first year, there was a 342% surge of unaccompanied children across the border. You know, CBS reported that, Mr. I'm going to quote them now, Mr. Biden's election, as well as policy changes announced by his administration, those would be your changes, led smugglers to tell migrant youth they had a better chance of being allowed to stay in the United States than they had under Trump. Meanwhile, you've lost track of tens of thousands of them. The Times also reviewed data that showed the government couldn't reach more than 85,000 of these children who they just turned over into the hands of, of smugglers. Of modern, these are modern day slave traders. And you're just giving these children to them. What is going on? Why are you doing this? Uh, uh, Senator, so um, uh, of course, there are a number of factual inaccuracies uh, in your question. But let me, uh, let me address uh, two lines of effort that we have. Uh, uh, to combat the scourge of exploitation. Why, why don't we just start with why you enabled it? Can we just start with that? Why is it that you have enabled 
345,000 children to be to smuggled across this border and then sent into the hands of modern day slave traders. In 2021, you made the decision to change Title 42 to allow unaccompanied children to come into the United States and then to be sent into the interior of the country. Under the last administration, children were reunited with their families in their home country. You changed that, and as soon as you changed it, the numbers exploded. That is your responsibility. Quite a number of false statements, uh, Senator. Which, so which is, can, what is false about so, that statement? So if I can um, uh, state what I've been trying to state, one of the uh, significant policy decisions that we have made is to focus our worksite enforcement investigative efforts, our criminal investigative efforts on unscrupulous employers that exploit individuals because of their vulnerabilities, and that includes that includes underage workers. That is not that, what the New York Times investigation found. I would, Mr. Chairman, I just ask at this point, I'd like to enter into the record the New York Times article is migrant children were put to work. U.S. ignored warnings. This is from April 17th, 2023. This is this, this morning. And I'd also like to enter into the record the New York Times article alone and exploited migrant children work brutal jobs across the U.S. This is from February 25th, 2023. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What these articles show, Mr. Secretary, is that the administration has done nothing but facilitate this crisis. You changed Title 42. You allowed hundreds of thousands of migrant children to come across the border, and then you made it worse. When they became a political crisis for you, when that huge surge of kids across the border because you changed Title 42, when it became an optics crisis, what did you do? You began pressuring officials and agencies to skip the vetting process and get these kids out as soon as possible to sponsors who weren't vetted. Here's the times again. As shelters filled with children... The administration began loosening vetting restrictions and urging case managers to speed the process along. You have at every stage facilitated this modern day indentured servitude of minor children. Why should you not be impeached for this? Senator, I, I look forward to discussing this issue further because you are um, misstating the facts uh, so uh, terribly. I, I am I, reading you the facts from articles in the news, and your usual modus operandi is what you're doing again today, which is just to deny, deny, deny. Why have you permitted 345,000 children to come into this country unaccompanied? Why have you permitted thousands of them to be abused and exploited? Senator, what we do is we enforce the law. But let me just say this. <laughs> you're it not. Is, it is stunning to me, stunning to hear you say that the prior administration reunited children with their parents. Oh, I see. When so this fact, is their fault. When in so fact, you're not going to take any responsibility for the indentured servitude and exploitation of children that is happening on your watch. A moment ago, you were crowing about the fact that you treated children so well, and yet we find tens of thousands of children who are forced to work as slaves because of your policies, and you turn around and blame a prior administration. Mr. Secretary, this is par for the course for you. You do it every time you appear before this committee. You do it every time you appear before Congress. I, for one, am sick and tired of it, and thousands of children are in physical danger, danger, because of what you are doing. You should have resigned long ago, and if you cannot change course, you should be removed from office. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Hawley is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Secretary Mayorkas, let me start with you. You're familiar with the chant, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Are you familiar with that? I am. Do you know what it means? I do. Can you explain it to us? Um, uh, Senator, that is a, um, a chant um, that speaks of uh, Palestinian desire for its homeland and a very expansive definition of its homeland at the expense of the independence of Israel. Well, indeed, I mean, it, it, it calls for the elimination of Israel, does it not? It does. So my question to you is, should students who are here on a visa, who gather and chant that slogan and actively advocate for the elimination of Israel and attacks on Jewish individuals, whether in the Middle East or here in the United States, as we're seeing on college campuses, should those students have their visas revoked? Uh, Senator, uh, I believe you are referencing a 
provision in the Immigration and Nationality Act uh, about which you have written uh, to me, and I am very familiar with uh, uh, your assertion that that statutory provision requires the revocation of their visa. But should they have their visas revoked? I'm asking you. Uh, uh, we are um, assessing um, your legal assertion. Um, it is a matter of legal interpretation of the statute. Well, just as a moral matter, I mean, should, should students who are here, foreigners who are here in this country, accessing our university system and advocating for the killing of Jews, should they be allowed to stay here at our leisure? Um, Senator, it is a matter of law, and uh, it requires a legal interpretation, and I am not in a position to provide that legal interpretation. Just, and let me add something. Well, no, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. I, I, I just, our, my time is very limited. I have to say I think your answer is disappointing, but let me ask. Senator Hawley, you're ready. I am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, when you were last before this committee, we talked about the tens of thousands, it's actually 420,000 unaccompanied migrant children who have come across the border under your watch. We talked about the reports of the number of these children who have been lost, who have been sold into labor trafficking, into sex trafficking. Since your last appearance, the numbers have grown worse. It now approaches 100,000 children, according to public reports, 100,000 children lost by your department and the Biden administration, migrant children, sold into labor trafficking and sex trafficking. Now, your Department of Homeland Security Investigations has the authority to do child exploitation investigations. How many of these kids have you gotten back? Uh, Senator, we um, uh, actually have prioritized uh, the rescue of children who have been human trafficked. Uh, our role uh, in the immigration process is to, with respect to unaccompanied children specifically, is to turn them over under the law within 72 hours to the Department of Health and Human Services, and that is indeed what we do. But how many of the children, nearly 100,000 children in the New York, you've read the New York Times reports, I assume, Mr. Secretary. I have read uh, many reports, uh, Senator Hawley. But do you know what I'm talking about with, with the number of children who have been sent to do operate heavy machinery, who are not being paid, who are not going to school, who are being denied food, migrant children unaccompanied, who are now in the clutches of labor traffickers? You're, you're familiar with this, right? That is precisely why I revised our worksite enforcement. Good. How many of the focus. kids have you gotten back then? 85,000 or more now lost, lost contact with, it's been months since you were last year, how many of those children have you rescued? Um, uh, Can Senator, you give me a number? You, you are conflating issues. So you can't give me a number. You, you haven't rescued any of these children. You haven't gotten any of them back. You, you are conflating issues and what is within our remit and what is outside of it. Okay. Well, it doesn't sound to me like this is a priority, and I have to tell you, that's what your own agents tell me as well. A whistleblower from your agency of Homeland Security Investigations has come to me and has said that special agents who are working on child trafficking cases and fentanyl interdiction cases have been pulled off of their investigations and sent to the southern border. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these agents at a time taken out of the field, taken off child exploitation cases, and sent to the southern border. Here's some of what she said. She said, we're being told to shut down investigations, to go hand out sandwiches and escort migrants to the shower and sit with them while they're in the hospital and those types of tasks. Mr. Secretary, you're taking special agents away from investigating child traffickers and child exploitation when you've lost tens of thousands of kids to traffickers and you're sending them to make sandwiches at the border. What is going on? You are incorrect, Senator. Are there special agents from HSI at the border? Senator, we have a number of priorities. We prioritize trafficking in children. We prioritize the fight against fentanyl. We uh, uh, prioritize Mr. Secretary, the security. you're not answering my question. We prioritize there, you're not answering my question. Are, are there HSI special agents who are currently at the border having been pulled away from other cases? Combating, yes or no? Combating the fight against fentanyl, yes. How many agents are currently at the border having been pulled off of their other cases? To fight uh, the scourge of fentanyl, I'd be very pleased to provide you with that data. That's not what the special agent is, is alleging. That's not what she said. She said that they're being taken off of fentanyl interdiction, off of child exploitation cases, off of their other 
investigations into criminals to make sandwiches. That's her quote. You're saying that this is a lie, that she's wrong? Uh, Senator, um, we have a number of law enforcement priorities with the resources Is making sandwiches have, one of them? We have, uh, of course not, Senator. We accomplish a tremendous amount. Because, Is she wrong? Because of the tremendous talent and dedication of our personnel, including a Homeland Security investigation. Making sandwiches for, for illegal immigrants. Is she wrong? This is one of your agents. Is she wrong? She says that there are 600 at least special agents pulled off of other cases, sent down to the border to babysit illegal immigrants. Is she wrong? Uh, Senator, um, our personnel, we use our personnel to achieve the maximum law enforcement objective possible. Ah. That is what we do. And so I'm you're not gonna deny it. And I'm incredibly proud of what our people do well, this every is news. single day. This is news. Well, I want to thank this brave whistleblower for coming forward and let the record reflect that the secretary will not deny what she has said, that hundreds of special agents are pulled off of their law enforcement duties all around the country, by the way. Her testimony to me is this happens all around the country and sit down to the, sent down to the border to make sandwiches for illegal immigrants. This is your administration in action. It's a total failure, Mr. That, secretary. That is incorrect. Marshall, Senator Hawley is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Secretary Mayorkas, let me start with you. You're familiar with the chant from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. You familiar with that? I am. Do you know what it means? I do. Can you explain it to us? Um, uh, Senator, that is a, um, a chant um, that speaks of uh, Palestinian desire for its homeland and a very expansive definition of its homeland at the expense of the independence of Israel. Well, indeed. I mean, it, it calls for the elimination of Israel, does it not? It does. So my question to you is, should students who are here on a visa, who gather and chant that slogan and actively advocate for the elimination of Israel and attacks on Jewish individuals, whether in the Middle East or here in the United States, as we're seeing on college campuses, should those students have their visas revoked? Uh, Senator, uh, I believe you are referencing a provision in the Immigration and Nationality Act uh, about which you have written uh, to me, and I am very familiar with uh, uh, your assertion that that statutory provision requires the revocation of their visa. But should they have their visas revoked? I'm asking you. Uh, uh, we are um, assessing um, your legal assertion. Um, it is a matter of legal interpretation of the statute. Well, just as a moral matter, I mean, should, should students who are here, foreigners who are here in this country, accessing our university system and advocating for the killing of Jews, should they be allowed to stay here at our leisure? Um, Senator, it is a matter of law and uh, it requires a legal interpretation, and I am not in a position to provide that legal interpretation. Just, and let me add something. Well, no, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. I, I, I just, my time is very limited. I have to say I think your answer is disappointing, but let me ask you something else. Let, let me ask you about people who say other things. What about people who say things like, on October the 7th, F Israel, I'm cleaning up the language here, F Israel, the government and its military, are you ready for your downfall? People who say things like, F Israel and any Jew who supports Israel. May your conscience haunt your dreams until your last breath. Palestine will be free one day. F apartheid Israel and is any Israeli. What, this is pretty extreme rhetoric, don't you think? Senator, um, I do, and I think there is a distinction between espousing or endorsing terrorist ideology and uh, speech uh, that is uh, odious, that does not rise to that um, level. Fair enough. This person works for you. This is Nuja Ali, an employee of the Department of Homeland Security, who posted these comments on October the 7th. That's not all she posted. She also posted this graphic. Now, this is a fake graphic, I want to be clear, but I think we understand it. This is a paraglider, a Hamas paraglider, depicted here with a machine gun flying into Israel. She posted it under her online alias with the celebratory Free Palestine. 
Mr. Secretary, what, what's going on here? Is this, is this typical of, of people who work at DHS? This is an asylum and immigration officer who is posting these, frankly, pro-genocidal slogans and images on the day that Israelis are being slaughtered in their beds. What have you done about this? Four things I'd like to say to you. Number one, your question to suggest that it, that is emblematic of the men and women of the Department of Homeland Security is despicable. Number I'm sorry, two, what have you done? This person works for the Department of Homeland Security. Have you fired her? That was one of four answers. Have you fired her? One. Have you fired her? Don't come to this hearing room when Israel has been invaded and Jewish students are barricaded in libraries in this country and cannot be escorted out because they are threatened for their lives, you have employees who are celebrating genocide and you are saying it's despicable for me to ask the question? Has she been fired? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary. After um, the consumption of Senator Hawley's time, I'd like to speak. Has she been fired? Because I will we not would like be, an answer. Would you? Because I will not be given the opportunity. Has she been fired? So uh, that individual has been placed on administrative leave. So she's one. not been fired. Number two. Number Why has two, she not been fired? Number two, the individual was hired in 2019. Why has she not been number fired? Number three, I cannot speak to an ongoing personnel matter. Why, why has this person not been fired? Your answer is you can't speak to it? This isn't sufficient to fire her? I am not in a position to speak to an ongoing personnel matter. This that isn't sufficient to fire her? That's what you're telling me? That is not what I'm saying. But she's still on your payroll as that, we sit here today. That is not what I'm saying. She's still on your payroll as we sit here today. Senator? How many cases? She was an asylum and immigration officer. How many cases did she adjudicate? Senator, I'm not in a position to speak about an ongoing person. I'm not asking about that. I'm asking you how many cases she adjudicated. My uh, answer remains. Did she adjudicate any cases involving Israelis seeking asylum in this country? Same answer. Well, let me just point you to what else she posted on social media, where she drew attention to the fact that she is an immigration and asylum officer. Hashtag immigrants, hashtag asylum seekers, hashtag Palestine, hashtag refugees welcome. This is on her LinkedIn post where she has her professional affiliation posted. So I think the American people deserve to know, has, has she admitted, contrary to law, individuals who should not be in this country or denied Jewish refugees, whose genocide she's advocating, asylum that they deserve? Same answer. You're not gonna, you're not gonna tell us what this person's done? Are you conducting a review of her cases at least? Senator, as I have said, over and over again, I cannot speak to an ongoing. You said that you will not. Matter. I can't believe that you would come to this committee knowing this. You know about this. I've written to you about it. You know all about it. And you come here unwilling to answer and suggest that it is wrong of me to ask you the question. Quite frankly, Mr. Secretary, I think that your performance is despicable. And I think the fact that you are not willing to provide answers to this committee is absolutely atrocious. Mr. Chairman, may I? Like, if you'd like to have a, a minute to respond, you were oh, allowed I, to. I would, and I'm not sure I'll limit it to 60 seconds. That's fine. Number one, uh, what I found despicable is the implication uh, that uh, this language, tremendously odious, um, uh, actually it could be emblematic of the sentiments of the 260,000 men and women of the Department of Homeland Security. Number one. Number two, uh, Senator Hawley takes an adversarial approach to me in this question, and perhaps he doesn't know my own background. Perhaps he does not know that I am the child of a Holocaust survivor. Perhaps he does not know that my mother lost almost all her family at the hands of the Nazis. And so I find his adversarial tone to be entirely misplaced. I find it to be disrespectful of me and my heritage, and I do not expect an apology, but I did want to say what I just articulated. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can, can I just respond since he has referenced me personally? Senator Hawley, we need to move on. Senator, Senator Hawley, you're recognized for your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to the witnesses for being here. I want to start my time with a piece of oversight business, if I could. Last week, 
when the Secretary of Homeland Security was here, Secretary Mayorkas, I asked him about a whistleblower claim, a whistleblower who had come forward to my office and alleged that as many as 600 security special agents from Homeland Security Investigations, 600, had been removed from felony investigations, including particularly child exploitation investigations, and sent to the southern border to do things like make sandwiches for illegal immigrants. Uh, that's, that's a quote from the whistleblower, not from me. Here's what she said. We're being told to shut down investigations to go hand out sandwiches and escort migrants to the shower and sit with them while they're in the hospital and those types of tasks. Now, Secretary Mayorkas did not deny this. He did say that, well, they're working on fentanyl. They may be working on fentanyl claims while they are at the border. After that testimony, multiple additional whistleblowers came forward to my office from across the country, different whistleblowers unrelated to each other from different offices across the country, and directly contradicted Secretary Mayorkas' testimony. One whistleblower said, Secretary Mayorkas was, and I'm going to quote him now, absolutely lying, quote, and that agents were not, in fact, being reassigned to investigate fentanyl cases. Another whistleblower claimed that he was reassigned to the border to, in his words, quote, babysit illegal immigrants. A fourth whistleblower confirmed that special agents had been pulled off child exploitation investigations. And all of these whistleblowers provided documentation about being asked to drop felony investigations, move to the southern border to conduct essentially ministerial tasks along the lines that the first whistleblower alleged. So, Mr. Chairman, I don't, I, of course, I don't personally know whether this is accurate or not. I know now we have multiple whistleblowers who are all alleging the same thing. And they are also pointed out to me, these whistleblowers, that there may be violations of the law. In fact, the whistleblowers allege that these practices violate 13 U.S.C. 1301, that it violates the Office of Management and Budget Circular A76, that it violates inter internal ICE travel policies. So what I have done, Mr. Chairman, is per my normal practice, and the practice I think all of us follow on this committee, I have collected this information. I have written a letter to the Inspector General of DHS asking his office to investigate these claims, which I'm sharing with the committee today, and I've asked him to report back to me and to the committee so that we can see what he says. I'd like to submit this for the record if I could, Mr. Chairman. I wanna thank you for your work always with whistleblowers and for those who come forward to my office and other offices before. And so I'm putting this on the record and we'll see what he says. And I hope that he'll look into this and he'll get back to us and we can evaluate these claims. Um, so uh, 